Hello and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 29 in a 10 part video series where we're learning how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. In the previous video, I showed you how to use configuration elements and configuration attributes, but the technique we were using there was manual. Um, that's not to say that's a bad technique. If, if that's all you learned about configurations was what I showed you in the last video, you are way ahead of the game. But I wanna step it up uh, even further by showing you how to use something called a configuration element, but to do so programmatically. If you haven't seen the previous video, make certain you see that one first, but let's look at our new workflow here. Again, you know the slide by now. If not, you can go back to the previous slide or just hit pause. So hit pause, welcome back. Let's continue onwards here. Here is a workflow that if you look at it just briefly, kind of looks like a few workflows ago. It looks like this bad example here where we had a branch for production and a branch for a test dev. And we decided back then that, that we didn't really want to do that. But please do not confuse this old workflow with this new workflow because they're doing two entirely different things. They both have some branching going on depending upon what the user says, yes, I want to run this in production or no, I want to run this in test dev. It'll branch one way or the other. But what's going on in these schema elements is completely different than what we saw earlier. What's going to happen in this branch is this scriptable task, I'll show you how in a bit, but this scriptable task is going to programmatically go into the configuration repository, go to our configuration element, and then go change the values of all of the configuration attributes to be values that are appropriate for a production environment. And similarly, this uh, branch down here has a schema element that will go programmatically into the configuration repository to programmatically go to our configuration element and programmatically change the value of our configuration attributes. So we're not actually that this is not the workflow that's actually going to do things in our, our different environments, but rather this is a workflow that programmatically changes our configuration attribute values so that we don't have to go to the configurations tab and manually change those values. But in order to see how this works, let's go into edit mode. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go over to this general tab, which you're familiar with and notice in this case here I only have one workflow attribute that I've called my configuration element. You don't have to use the same name I just use that name as an example and this time I chose a type of variable called configuration element. It's a special type of variable that lets us programmatically interact with configuration attributes and furthermore I need to set its value and I know this sounds a little contrary to what I said in the previous video, but in this case here, I am going to hard code the value that I'm about to set here. I'm not gonna create a link to the configuration repository, but rather I'm gonna hard code this workflow variable to one of the configuration attributes, excuse me, to one of the configuration elements in the repository. So I'll just click not set, and I'll type a portion of the name of my configuration element, choose the configuration element. And now in my this workflow, I can use this variable, this workflow variable, this workflow attribute called my configuration element, I can use that in some fancy ways. So I'm gonna do so by going over to the schema tab. And uh, I could pick either of these, they both work essentially the same way, but let's pick test dev. And you'll notice that through binding, I've set up a connection between my workflow variable called my configuration element, and I've brought it into the schema element in question. And I happen to use the same name for the variable. Now, what I can do here, now that this scriptable task has a variable called my configuration element, in the scripting, I can say things like this. I can say my configuration element dot set attribute with key. And then whenever you use this set attribute with key, it takes two, um, two arguments. The first argument is the name of the configuration attribute that you want to change the value of. And then the second argument is the value you want to change it to. 
Now, in the case of the first argument, those are always going to be a string where the string matches the name of a configuration attribute. But the second argument uh, could be a string like we see in this example here, or a number, or a VC colon virtual machine, or whatever, as long as it matches the type of the variable in the configuration repository. And again, the schema element that I have up here for production works the same way, but notice that the IP address ranges I'm using to set the repository values are different. So these, this path is for production. It's setting production values. In the test dev branch, it sets, in the repository, it sets test dev values. So now that we've done that, let's run this workflow and see what it does. Just before we do, we'll go over to the configurations tab. In the configurations tab, I want you to see how we're currently configured. So we're currently configured with, it looks like we've got, uh, what are those? Those are um, production IP addresses in the repository. Let's go back to the workflows tab. And in the workflows tab, we're gonna run this workflow and the first time we run it, let's go ahead and say, yes, run this workflow so that it sets up production environment appropriate IP addresses. So production. Now, you know that that's going to mean that our workflow is going to go on this upper branch. So let me click submit to run the workflow. And if you watch real closely, you'll see the, well, that's too fast, but you can see that we went through this branch. And if I were to go back to the configuration, actually, I can do it. Go back to the configurations tab. Notice we still have configuration attribute values that are appropriate for our production environment. On the other hand, if I were to run this workflow again, let me select the workflow, not the token. If I run the workflow again, and this time say no, meaning not production, but rather test dev, if I run that workflow, and I rush real quickly over to the configuration tab. Right now it says production IP addresses, but programmatically it's going to, there we go, change the configuration repository configuration attributes to values that are appropriate for my test dev environment. And as a result of programmatically changing those values, now whenever I run any workflows like the previous one that are using the configuration repository values, any workflows like this are gonna automatically have that change, which makes my life a whole lot easier. Uh, one last thing, we'll be talking about something called the API Explorer more uh, in a few videos from now, but just quickly taking us into the API Explorer. Uh, remember the type of uh, workflow attribute I created was called a configure, configuration element. If you wanna know how I knew the name of that method set attribute with key or whatever it's called. If you go into the API Explorer and either search or scroll to find this thing called configuration element, if you double click it, here's configuration element. If I expand configuration element, uh, you'll recall the method I called in my workflow is called set attribute with key and it took two arguments and it returned nothing. Um, this thing called the API Explorer is how I find out things like what methods, the solid dot entries here are called methods, and the hollow dot entries are properties, but the API Explorer is how I go find out what are the names of the properties and methods that this type of object has inside of it. Now again, we'll talk more about the API Explorer later on, but we have a few videos before we get to that, so join me in the next video, which is gonna be our last one on configurations, and in particular, what we're gonna be talking about in the next video is how configurations and packaging have a nice little thing you can do with each other. So I will see you in the next video.